Coxeter makes it worse in the sense that um, he does not give uh, to begin with the, def the formulation of um, Sylvester, he gives his own definition or statement of the theorem but thereby he drops the requirement that the points are distinct and then the theorem is false an easily constructed counterexample. Okay, that is what I wanted to say about how a once deep theorem these days is a trivial programming exercise. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, do you know about corresponding three-dimensional theorem? Yes, yes. Uh, and that is uh, that depends on how you how you uh, generalize distinct points. Uh, one way of defining distinctness in the plane is that any two that uh, any two, that any two points uniquely determine the line through them. Yeah. The generalization for three dimensions is that any three points uniquely determine the plane through them. And then uh, th what you then can do is uh, take one point, uh, project the other points in the plane, uh, prove the theorem in the plane and then restore the lines in the planes again. My guess is that um, Coxeter has missed that, genera that generalization because he never took the trouble of stating explicitly that the point should be distinct. Or he didn't care. I mean, that's the other possibility. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking for a conclusion from what you've done, and, and, and I suggest one, and, and that is that um, we observe a the theorem which took many years to solve, um, uh, which can be expressed as a fairly simple computer, simple looking computer program. Should I infer from this that actually computer programming really is hard in the mathematical sense to a mathematician? Untrained mathematicians find it very difficult. Um, no, not necessarily. Uh, the program is short. I think the correctness proof simple. Uh, but what is certainly true is that uh, uh, in general a program is a very compact deposit of our intellectual labels. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. May I propose another candidate to try to apply your method to? Uh, in the 70s, the following cousin of the Sylvester analyzed your Suppose you have a finite number of points in the plane. Not all collinear. Yes. Real Euclidean plane? Yes. Yeah. It's not all in other planes. <laughs> and, and there are colors in two colors, red and blue. Yeah. In an arbitrary fashion. Then there is a line which is unicolor. May have more than two points. But they are all either containing more than one point. They are all either red. Finite number of points, each point is red or blue, there exists a line uh, that contains more than one point of homogeneous color. Yes, that is how the effect. Uh, by ordinary mathematical methods, it's, it's somewhat harder, the same uh -huh. picture, but harder uh -huh. than the line. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. It has been done, by the way. It's not an open. It's not. It's not an open. It's a closed problem. Look. Okay. okay. Well, uh, I might try it tonight in bed. You can try it. Well, thinking horizontally is, is, is a nice, nice place. To Any more? If you had heuristically chosen A to be the middle point of the tree, or of the uh, map, would it have been easier to show that either small B or small C was... No, same argument. Same argument. Yeah. You also need the monotonicity, monotonicity argument. Of yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you may not... You, you use this step. You may use the you may use the uh, implication in the other sense in which it's very common. It, it's, it, I, I find that there's, uh, there's not another comment uh, the way in which we have been influenced by our education. Everybody knows the monotonicity of the addition in this form, and it's immediately if you suggest this, you say, well, what what can you conclude? People come up with this with a sum. To do it the other way around. It's just a form that we don't know it. But it's logically equivalent. I find that a little bit frightening. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.